Well, hello everyone, and welcome back here to Everlasting Summer. Been a bit of a job getting this to work today. For some reason, the save file was corrupted, so I had to play through a bit of the game again, which wasn't really a problem, to be honest with you. So here we are. We've been talked into paddling the lovely Lena and the delicious Slavia across to the island to collect so strawberries and that's where we're going to pick it up this episode so we got into the boat I untied it pushed off the shore and started and tried to start paddling and where exactly are we heading to right there she pointed her finger at the island the island that's named the closest one I wonder which captain gave it such an original name well the island is indeed close to the shore. Aye, aye, Captain. If only I'd known what was waiting for me, Ed. I wasn't an experienced oarsman. I'd rowed a boat just once or twice in my entire life. It was less than half a mile to the island, but we were making our way in zigzags thanks to my skills. By approximately the middle of the trip, my arms hurt so badly that I dropped the paddles to get some rest. Well... Are there any strawberries anywhere else? I mean, in more accessible places? But the tastiest ones grow there. Slavia gave me a puzzled look. Is it hard for you to row alone? Lena, unlike Slavia, understood everything straight away. Oh, it's nothing. Why don't you two change into your swimming costumes? I'm sure that'll encourage me. Anyway, I couldn't let a fragile girl help me. The rest of the way I spent concentrating on staying alive while getting to the island. Slavia and Lena dis discussed something, but I wasn't listening. That was too much for me. At last, we arrived. Completely exhausted, I got out of the shore and looked at the boathouse. You, you could almost walk over there. Good lord. Yeah. It seemed so far away that I felt like a first person on the moon watching the earth rise. Here you go. Slavia handed me a basket. It was a small island, barely a hundred meters long, and it looked more like a birch grove with even rows of trees covering its entire surface. A calm green sea spread beneath our feet, with wind causing lonely waves on its surface from time to time. This island looked like a lost paradise. It's no wonder that the most delicious strawberries grow just here. We gotta split up. That way we'll do the job faster. Yeah, sure. But there are only two baskets, said Lena humbly. Oh, you're right. My bad. So how are we gonna split up then? Nah. As, as if there is a choice here. Let me go with you. Let's go. Oh, that's fine. Slavia grabbed the second basket and ventured to the opposite side of the island. Will? Mm -mm. Well, Will? Let's go. Yes. Lena smiled. <laughs> Just pay attention. Don't leave a single berry behind and try to do the right voice for the right person. You too. So, it was harvest time. Indeed, the strawberries here were delicious. I could probably eat all of them if I didn't stop myself in time. Despite being wild grown, the berries were close to garden ones in size and had a rich red colour, so it was clear that our visit here wasn't in vain. Lena followed me closely as we only had one basket for the both of us. I felt like a real mushroom picker, examining each shrub and carefully pouring the glass. Well, you're much better than me. Am I? Frankly, I'm not even counting them. Yeah, right you are. The basket was already half full. You must enjoy nature, right? I do. The bright sun rays pierced the treetops and blinded me for a second. I sat down on the ground and leaned against a tree. Still, it's so beautiful here. Lena sat down next to me. So close that our elbows touched. Yes. We just sat and enjoyed the moment. 
It seemed like time stood still. The wind gently shook the tree leaves, some bugs lazily hopped around the grass, and splashes of sunlight played on the faraway water surface. Lena put her head on my shoulder. I apparently put my hand between her legs. I was surprised at first, but then I heard her regular breathing and thought that it's just a matter of course. Oh, it's her hand. Okay, right. Probably she felt drowsy and wanted to take a quick nap. I sat there and didn't think of anything for a few minutes. But then words started crossing my mind with ultrasonic speed. Lena. So close. Sleeping. So warm. So gentle. Feelings. I gazed at her. She had such a serene, such a tranquil look on her face that it seemed that right now she's not here, but in some kind of better world. I don't know what would have happened the next moment if I didn't hear the voice of Slavia. Semyon, Lena! I shook my head from side to side a few times to come to my senses. Lena started to wake up. She opened her eyes and gave me an empty look. Have a nice dream? Huh? Suddenly realising she dozed off leaning on my shoulder, Lena blushed. Oh, I'm sorry. It's fine. Slavia came over to us, so Lena rushed to get up. So how much you got? I sighed. That's not a lot. Her basket was filled with strawberries to the brim. Well, it's enough anyway. It's time to get back. I grabbed the basket and we headed back to the boats. The way took less time as I tried to concentrate on rowing and ignoring everything else. My only wish was to get back alive, as the first trip hadn't gone without consequences and now my hands started to hurt after only a few sweeps of the oars. Having tied up the boat, I fell to the ground with no energy left. Sla Slavia and Lena leaned over me. I enjoyed the view. You could have said something if it was so hard for you. Yes. Never mind, it's fine. I'll just lie here for a bit and everything will be alright. Okay then. Get those baskets to Olga, please. We have something else to do. Yeah, sure. I was ready to agree with everything at the moment, just so I wouldn't have to get up. Slavia put the baskets full of strawberries next to me and headed to the square, happily chatting with Lena about something. The hardest part is done anyway. That's what I thought before I got up and took the baskets. After the rowing, they felt like cement bags, even while weighing barely more than a few kilograms each. So the trip to the camp leader's cabin took much longer than usual. I had to stop every 50 metres to have a rest. Once I finally made it, I put the baskets on the ground and sat on the deck's chair with difficulty. Olga! Olga, I've got presents for you! There was no answer. I barely, barely managed to get up and enter the cabin. There was nobody there. If you don't need them, it's up to you. I lay down on the deck chair and fell asleep. I had a weird dream about a strawberry race. I was rowing a boat with my last ounces of strength, trying to escape huge berries that were chasing me. My hands were fa failing me and I could barely see anything because of the sweat covering my face. Blood was hammering in my temples, but the strawberries were getting closer. They were baring their teeth at me. But wait. Strawberries with teeth? Semyon! Semyon! I woke up. Olga was standing beside me, shaking my shoulder. I see you got a rich harvest, didn't you? Um, let's thank... Yeah, let's, 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 let's be modest here. Let's be modest. Oh, but that's not all. Seriously, I was just anticipating the lovely rest I was about to have. Do you even know what these strawberries are for? Not a clue. What an honest confession. We'll make a cake out of them. I see. Well, that makes sense. 
to honor the miraculous rescue of Shurik. And it's all thanks to you. It was getting clear, it was clear that getting the strawberries wasn't the last thing left to do. And why? Please tell me. If I am such a hero, why do I have to organize a celebration in my name all by myself? Well, I guess. So, I have an important task for you. We are missing yeast, flour, and sugar and need it all in the canteen for dinner. And those who will make the cake can't deal with this on their own somehow? I asked pitifully. Of course they can't. All of them are busy. They're busy waiting for you to find these items. And you are the only one in the whole camp who does nothing. While the words were partially true, that doesn't make it any easier for me now. Moreover, those words felt like a bullet to my head. So, write it down. You'll get yeast in the infirmary, flour in the library, and sugar in the clubhouse. Okay. Wait, wait, uh... I have no time. I'm in a hurry. Good luck. You'll need it. She smiled slyly and left. Of course, there were a lot of strange things in this camp, but Olga was one of the stranger ones. She yeast in the infirmary? Okay, I can deal with that, but flour in the library? And sugar? No, it's way beyond my comprehension. I spat on the floor. The floor spat back. I don't want to, and I will not believe this. Tell me, just tell me you're pulling my leg. I would not be surprised if a crowd of fat green trolls were to appear here right now beside me, with every one of them feeling obligated to laugh at me. So, maybe to hell with this cake. <sighs> I weighed my opinions for some time. No? If such a major, major plan of Olga's fell through, I would be in for a world of hurt. And it would complicate both my life in the camp and my search for answers, which I've stopped for quite a while. It seems I have no choice. Okay. So, let's try to imagine our normal walking pattern. Have you noticed that uh, Yelana and Lisa are so far away from everyone else? I wonder why that is. Okay, so, I think let's go to... Let's go to the clubhouse first. It feels like I've gone through more things today than all the previous days combined. Thus, approaching the clubhouse, I'd even forgotten to think about how awkward it would must be to look for sugar there. Oh dear. Shurik and Electronic were enthusiastically building something. That... That is not an enthusiastic look. That is a... Uh, I'm mildly terrified of this female Catwoman that Shurik's going to sleep with look. They were so busy that they didn't even notice me. I looked closely. It was some kind of a robot, or at least the body of one. Moreover, this robot was female and had animal ears. I didn't want to make up theories about the purpose of such a device for luminaries of camp cybernetics. Even though the design looked practic practically workable, I had my doubts about this robot ever being able to conquer Earth, or at least being able to do anything on its own. But they seemed to be enjoying the process more than the end result itself. Possibly not with what Shurik has in mind. And that was something we shared, even though I didn't want to admit it. On the other hand, they weren't afraid of possible failure, criticism, or jokes. They were working towards their goal without paying attention to others, who would call it unrealistic, or even absurd. Oh, it looks like I'm truly comparing them to luminaries of the sciences. Hey guys! I greeted them uncertainly. Ah, Semyon, come in. We're, we're always glad to see you. I was actually already inside. You know, sorry for what happened yesterday. I barely remember anything, but, well, never mind. It's okay. What brings you to a humble abode? Electronic looked at me slyly. Oh, terrifyingly. Sometimes I feel that he makes such a face when he knows something about the other person. Something he can use in a right moment. 
sugar. I need sugar. An image of an ancient from an ancient video game suddenly came to my mind, where some kind of unit, like a builder or something, cried out with its five pixel stature, Gold! We need more gold! We got it, said Electronic calmly. Why would you want it? I felt that I shouldn't explain to Shurik that they were to bake a cake for him. I shouldn't spoil the surprise. I don't know. Olga told me to get some. Okay, hang on. Electronic disappeared behind the door into the next room. And why do you have sugar here? Why not in the canteen? When the food truck came last time, it was the last thing to unload. And given that our building is the closest one to the entrance, they decided to leave it here to save some effort. That's reasonable, isn't it? The door opened, revealing Electronic holding, holding a huge bag behind him. I really don't know what size a cake will be, but it obviously was too much sugar. Well, thanks, but I don't need it all. But where would we put it? Electronic gave me a surprised look. We don't have a place for it. You asked for sugar, so take it. It seems that previous smile of his wasn't without reason. Maybe you'll help me then? It's not that far to carry. We're busy. He pointed his hand at the robot. I gazed at Shurik. He owed me, after all. He hesitated, then looked away in shame. I sighed, took the bag and headed to the door. Thanks anyway, I said, parting, exerting myself. Uh, but I didn't make it too far. After a mere twenty metres, I had to put the bag down to have a rest. I had no idea how much it weighed, but it felt like more than twenty kilos. On the one hand, it was just two hundred metres to the canteen. On the other hand, such a disturbance with this payload on my shoulder, such a distance with this payload on my shoulder, or alternately in my hands, or my legs, or under my arm, or even on my head, looked impossible for me to cover. And as I resigned myself to move in minor sprints with prolonged pauses between them, so I could get there by night at least, I heard a voice behind me. Maybe I could help you. I saw Lena in front of me. I don't think you can. It was one of those moments when I felt, I felt painfully how dramatically I was out of shape. I can bring a handcart. Ah, Lena, using her brain. A handcart. Why didn't I think of that myself? Yes, that would be great. Wait here, I'll be right back. She smiled and ran in the direction of the square. What would I do without her? It's good that Lena isn't always that shy, can take the initiative sometimes. I started to think. She seemed quite unusual now. With no trace of shyness in her face, and actually that the complete opposite. Smiles and confidence. The offer of help wasn't something extraordinary by itself, but getting it from Lena. A few minutes later she came back with a smallish handcart. I put the bag down on it. Thanks. Don't mention it. She blushed and looked down. Oh, the later we all know is back. So I'll go then. Yeah, see ya. And thank you again. I shouted after her. Sometimes... Oop. Sometimes I felt that there were two different people living inside of Lena. I wanted to be a third. But the second one, confident, happy, and sometimes even bold, only appears when she talks to me. Or am I making things up again? I thought it would be better to get all the ingredients at once, so I headed to Olga's cabin with the handcart. Okay, uh, library. If every other place on the cake ingredient list made at least some sense to me, then flour in the, from the library made none. I thought hard about who would put it in the library and why, but couldn't find any sane explanation after all. Given Jemia's harsh nature, nature, I'd better knock first. Like that. Oh. Damn. Open. Jemia peered at me closely from behind her glasses. What you want? Hmm. Don't think anything weird, but I need... 
Yeah, I didn't want to look like an idiot and decided to explain things carefully. I need some flour. Olga said it's in here. I understand that sounds strange to keep flour in the library, but I was sent to you, and it's needed for a cake to celebrate Shurik's rescue. Yes, I have the flour. What's so strange about it? Jenny replied with surprise. At that second, it seemed like I'd been hit on the head with a heavy weight and lost the ability to understand anything at all. Flower? In the library? Sure, what's so strange about it? We're in Wonderland. I'm Alice. And now I'm going to eat that magic mushroom and I'll be back home. <laughs> hey. No, yeah. I was daydreaming. Hello, wait here. I'll be right back. Ah. She disappeared behind the bookshelves while I folded my hands and started waiting. A moment later, the sound of a trapdoor groaning on its hinges reached me. Hey, do you need some help? I inquired loudly. I'll deal with this. Shania barked out to me. She seems to be in the basement, so I'll have to wait a little. Okie dokie. A few minutes passed, but Jenya still hadn't returned. I was starting to get worried when the door was suddenly flung open and Lisa came into the library. She looked surprised too, seeing me here. What are you doing here? Am I not allowed to be here? I said rudely to her. Alyssa was clearly a bit overwhelmed. Ah, what do I care? She snorted and headed to Genia's table. And why are you here then? Alyssa measured me with her eyes carefully and almost opened her mouth to say something, but then seemed to change her mind and turned away, hiding her hands behind her back. Returning a book? I blurted the first thing off the top of my head. It's none of your business, she replied with a hint of hesitation. What book is it? Alyssa was silent. Oh, come on, let me see it. I wonder what Miss High Voltage Keep Away reads. It's none of your business. Her voice was even less confident. Okay, okay. Well, I don't exist or insist or anything. In fact, I was quite interested to find out what Alyssa was reading. Moreover, I was quite amused to see a book in her hands. TV, movies, or a computer, if one were available here. All these things seemed to be much more appropriate entertainment for a girl like her. But she had a book instead. Try to snatch the book or stay on guard. Um, let's try to snatch the book. My curiosity won. I struck at the right moment when Alyssa was looking away from me and snatched the book. Ouch! She screamed. In the following second, her face took an expression that made me question my decision and indeed the whole of reality. If I'm about to die, at least I will know what for. I had a copy of Gone with the Wind in my hands. Good book. That was the same book that Lena was reading that evening on a bench. I was so astonished that I completely forgot about my imminent death. Is it interesting? Yes. Alyssa answered without any enthusiasm, blushing. Okay then, I handed the books back to her. Personally, I think it's a bit overly dramatic, but very well written. Alyssa drew, threw it on the table and left the library quickly without looking at me. So, human things aren't alien to her. In the end, she too is a girl. After a quick review of everything that just happened, I concluded that there was actually nothing that strange. Finally, Genia's deep groan rang out, reaching each and every corner of the library. Grab it. I passed by the bookshelves and beheld a perspiring librarian sitting near the trapdoor leading to the basement with a small sack next to her. Well, they might have some sort of storehouse down there. Thanks. I took the sack and left the library. Thank goodness it wasn't too heavy, so I carried it down to Olga's cabin without too much effort. Okay, we are left with the infirmary, but I don't think we're going to ha oh what the hell let's let's do it <laughs> i want to find out
<laughs> I feel like I've visited the and I feel like I've visited the infirmary too often recently. But what can I do? That's how things pan out. I sighed and knocked on the door. Come in, the nurse said, with a trace of a sing-song accent. Good afternoon. Olga sent me to get some. I hesitated slightly. Yeast. Ah, sure. She gave me a broad smile, and I didn't notice. It's just... I don't have any. Pioneer. How so? She said that... Well, I had some, but there's none left. I didn't even bother asking why she had it in the first place. Well, don't you worry. You can have some aspirin, for example. That would be of some use to me, actually. Where do I get it, then? I sighed. Take this. She opened the drawer and pulled out some kind of bottle. I wasn't too interested. She had to bend down to open the drawer. I took a closer look. Ostankin Co. was a well-known brand of cheap beer in the USSR. Oh, okay. It was... it was beer. What's the matter? Beer is also a fermented product. She gave me a deep gaze. Not that I was looking that high. Nobody will even notice. She had a point. But everything looked so grotesque to me that I couldn't find anything to say. Are you sure? Absolutely. Okay then. The bottle clearly wouldn't fit into the pocket of my shorts. Besides, I was already pleased to see her. Well, thanks. I mumbled shyly, leaving the infirmary. Well, beer certainly could replace yeast. Even my limited knowledge of chemistry and biology was enough to accept this. But... Generally walking around with this bottle in my hands looked like a silly idea to me. I decided to bring it to Olga's cabin and hide it there. But I had to reach it somehow without anybody noticing the beer. And... we'll leave it there. Okay, I, I, I love this series here. I hope you guys are enjoying it too. Please leave a comment, let me know what you think. Please like if you haven't. Please subscribe. But until the next time, I've been Simon Parsons. This has been Everlasting Summer. Thank you, and good night.